بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Today we're going to discuss uh, chapter 7 the fluid systems What we need from this chapter uh, This is going to be the last uh, dynamic system that we're going to study All right, the fluid systems and we will talk briefly about a uh, math topic how to linearize and nonlinear equations Okay, because we will have uh, Sometimes we have nonlinear systems, how to linearize the equation of motion or any uh, nonlinear equation. We're going to talk about this at the end of the chapter. Now, today, what we're going to do, we're going to start uh, uh, discussing what is a fluid system, um, what are the basic elements or the basic elements for a fluid system, how to model a, a fluid system, how to derive the equation of motion describing this system. Okay and deriving the transfer function if we know what's the input what's the output just the same story different system okay same story just different or a new system all right now let me jump to tell you what do i mean by a fluid system okay this is a typical fluid system okay all right or sometimes we call it a, a, a liquid level system okay liquid level system So a fluid system is just a tank with some kind of a valve, okay? Usually we have a flow in and flow out. This is a fluid system. How to model this system? We need to uh, review what are the basic elements and review some basic uh, information about the fluid systems in general, okay? So let's get started and see what's the relationship. I'm sure all of you, you know this, from fluid dynamics or fluid uh, mechanics. You know what's the pressure and the head, okay? The pressure is the force over the area, right, from physics. If you have a tank, what's the pressure? The pressure will be the weight of the liquid, okay? And the area is the cross-sectional area. So the weight of the liquid is rho g times the volume, okay? If you divide by the area, okay, this area will cancel with this area, and the pressure is left with rho, the uh, density, g, the uh, gravity, times h, which is the head, okay? The height of the elevation or the elevation of the um, uh, fluid level or liquid level inside the tank, right? Okay, so what can you see here? The rho, if you assume that rho or the uh, density inside the tank is uniform, it's not changing, and the gravity is not changing on the same level, what will be proportional directly to the pressure, the head, okay? That's why we use the head, okay? Always we use the head instead of pressure for uh, fluid systems, okay? Because it's, this, this is the only parameter proportional to the pressure, okay? So this is the head. All right, let me use the pen, start using the pen. Um, maybe we're gonna need it, okay? So this is the head. The head. All right. What's the SI unit for the pressure? It's a Newton per meter squared or uh, Pascal. What's the uh, What do I mean by a gauge pressure? Atmospheric pressure, absolute pressure. Gauge pressure is the pressure that you see in the field that you measure using a um, when you go, for example, uh, to check the car uh, tire inflation. What you use, you use a gauge, right? This is a gauge pressure that you measure. Atmospheric pressure, it's always constant on the same level, okay, which is about 1, uh, 10 to the power 5 uh, Pascal. Absolute pressure, this is we use only in theory, absolute pressure. It is the total of the atmospheric plus the gauge, okay? So the gauge, this is what you usually use uh, in the field, okay, when you use measurements, okay? Reynolds number, remember uh, Reynolds number from uh, fluid mechanics? Reynolds number is the inertia force of the fluid flow inside the pipe over the viscous force. So when you have a high Reynolds number, that means you have high inertia force or inertia force is dominant in the fluid. If you have a, a, raw, a, a, a low Reynolds number, that means you have a, uh, uh, the viscosity of the fluid is dominant, okay, all right. 
Why we are interested in Reynolds number? Because uh, from the Reynolds number, from the definition of Reynolds number, you can define what kind of uh, flow inside the pipe. If you have a low Reynolds number, less than 2000, you will have a laminar flow. If you have a high Reynolds number, that means you have a uh, turbulent flow. You know what's the difference between turbulent and uh, and uh, laminar? Let me remind you, it's all about the streamlines. So if this is a pipe, okay, if the streamlines are in parallel, not intersecting, okay, so this is the laminar, laminar. Okay, just for your information, okay, this is uh, just a review. If you have a um, chaotic, okay, random, okay, streamlines, that means it's turbulent. Okay, turbulent. All right. Why we need to talk about the laminar and turbulent flow? Because remember when I uh, show you the, um, when I showed you the uh, uh, fluid system, it's a tank with a valve. So we need to know what is the flow inside the valve because the resistance, we're going to define what's the resistance in a second. The resistance, depending on what kind of flow do you have inside the valve. That's why we are interested in defining what kind of laminar or turbulent. Well, you will either have capillary or orifice, okay? Okay. Capillary, this is what do I mean by capillary. Small tube, okay, similar to this one, or the slot. Orifice is like a valve that you see in um, gases, for example, and other type of fluids, okay? This is what, this is turbulent. This one, this one, laminar, okay? You can see from the shape of the valve. All right, so capillary will be laminar and orifice will be turbulent, okay? All right, now for capillary or slot, we need to define what's the relationship between the flow inside the valve and the head because we're gonna use this when we model the fluid system, when we derive the equation of motion, okay? For capillary or slot, the flow inside the valve will be proportional to the difference in the head before and after. Okay, what is this K? This K is a constant depending on the shape of the uh, capillary or the slot, usually given for a certain type of valve. On the other hand, the orifice, orifice, okay, the flow is not uh, directly proportional, it's a proportional to the square root of the head before and after. So, okay, before and after, sorry here. So the flow inside an orifice, which is a turbulent flow, what can you see here? It's not gonna be linear anymore. It's gonna be nonlinear because it's turbulent flow, okay? All right, now let's define the resistance because we're gonna need this to derive the equation of motion for a fluid system. What is the resistance inside the, inside the valve? It is the change in level difference before and after over the change in the flow rate. So it's gonna be dH dQ, okay? So th this is, for example, a uh, uh, relationship between the head and the flow inside any valve. The slope will be simply your resistance, okay? For laminar flow, like what? Like a capillary or slot, okay. the relationship between the head and the flow is linear. Therefore, if you apply this equation, dH by dQ, R will be constant. It's going to be H over Q. It will be constant. Okay. Now look at the resistance here for a laminar flow, H over Q. And look at the resistance for electrical systems. R here is voltage over uh, current through. R here for a uh, valve, H, the head, over the flow rate. Do you see any... Do you see any, uh, um, what we call analogy between them? Yes, the head is analogous to the voltage and the flow rate is analogous to the current. And resistance here is the same as the resistance in an electrical system, okay? So you see there is analogy, okay? And this uh, proves uh, when we said at the beginning of the semester, all dynamic systems, they may look different from outside, but once you model them, you will see they are similar, okay? There is analogy between them. All right, what about turbulent flow? 
like an orifice. What about turbulent flow, like an orifice? How can we find the resistance? Look, for turbulent flow, like an orifice, the relationship between the head and uh, the flow rate is nonlinear. It's like a curve, right? It's not a line. It's changing, okay? From this equation, we can apply dh by dq, and after derivation, you will see it's not constant, okay? So how are we going to do this? How are we going to find the resistance? Okay, usually, okay, what we do for, we call this linearization, by the way, it's a math topic, okay? We you pick a point, okay, and this is going to be your reference point. We will also pick another point, uh, same point, I'm sorry, okay? And this is the reference point for the head, and this one, okay? This is the reference point. When you see a bar, this is your reference point, okay? So we will assume a small deviation, Okay, from the uh, reference point, which is usually, by the way, the steady state point. I will talk about it when we model the, the uh, fluid systems. Okay, so this is small change. I'm going to call it small Q. And this is small change in the head. I'm going to call it small H. So this is a new point here. Any new point here, for example, will be what? For a Q, will be Q bar plus small Q. And for the head, H bar plus HQ. So I'm, I'm assuming small perturbation, we call it, or small deviation, or small change. Then we will linearize. We will apply this, DH by DQ for this one. DH, if you apply DH, it will be what? This one will be zero because it's not changing with time. And you are left with H. What about Q? This will be zero if you take the uh, DH of DQ. Okay, this is DQ. And this is the H. Okay. And you're left with Q. So we call this the linearized uh, resistance. The linearized resistance. It's going to be simply what? For any point, you need to pick a point. Okay. Which is usually your steady state point. You'll see when we model uh, steady state uh, dynamic uh, fluid systems. It will be simply small H over small Q. When you, whenever you see small H or small Q, you remember this is the small deviation around the steady state point. Okay, please remember this because we're going to need it when we uh, model uh, flow systems. Okay, one more thing before we go to the modeling, we need to define what is the capacity for any tank. The capacity is the change in, in liquid stored over the change in the head or dv, d volume. This is volume, by the way, by d head. So if you divide the volume by the head, you are left with what? The cross sectional area. So any, for any tank, the capacity is simply the cross-sectional area. All right? Now look at the capacity here, okay? Look at the capacity here, okay? If you take, uh, if you uh, integrate both sides, H will be equal to 1 over C, the capacity, which is a constant, times the volume. And look at the capacity from electrical system. Do you see any analogy between the two? Yes. The volume is analogous to the charge. Remember the charge if you take the uh, integration of the current. And the head is analogous to the voltage. Okay, the head is analogous to the voltage. So there is analogy between them. All right. Now in the next uh, uh, video, we will start modeling. Okay, we will start modeling. All right. We know now what's the resistance, what's the capacity. All right. Uh, we will t start with this example. All right. This is a typical problem, okay? We call this problem a steady state and small deviation around the steady state. So I'm gonna leave this to the next uh, video, all right? So I'm gonna stop here.